It's been called the nerve center of historical power in Ireland. There have been defenses built here since the time of the Vikings, at least 1,000 years ago. Parts of the original castle built eight centuries ago still stand, and since its construction has been a location of major historical events in Ireland. This is a brief history of Dublin Castle in Dublin, Ireland. Hey everybody, this is Colonel Carson with Family Tree Nuts, and recently we visited Dublin Castle, and we certainly wanted to share that adventure with you. We make all kinds of history videos, most of them in the United States, but we have several in other countries, so if you like these types of videos, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, and click that bell so you don't miss our latest videos. This video is one of several that we have from Ireland, so be sure to check out our Ireland playlist. Now on to the castle. A place of military importance has been at this location for longer than was originally thought. In 1986, while doing renovations under where the powder tower once stood, ancient walls of defense were found that were built by the Vikings, likely more than a thousand years ago. The history of the Vikings in Dublin is one that is evolving all the time, and more things are being discovered about them every year. It is really unknown as to how long in human history that this site has been of importance. Dublin Castle began to be built in the year 1204, over 800 years ago, as a fortress by the order of King John of England. Yes, that King John, the brother to King Richard the Lionhearted, and the same one that you might remember from the legendary Robin Hood story. He is also the same King John who signed the Magna Carta. That's how old this castle is. The castle was the fortress of the Viceroys of Ireland, who were the representatives of the King of England and later Great Britain. The fortress had four corner towers and a central courtyard that stood intact until 1684 when a fire severely damaged the structures. Some of the original work still exists today including the record tower. The area was built up again following the fire and became a Georgian palace. Government offices, apartments for royalty, banquet halls, and the chapel royal were all built. Grand balls and ceremonies were held here several times a year and were the center of politics in most of Ireland and certainly Dublin. The large courtyard held military formations and parades, as well as several other important events. Over the centuries, Dublin Castle was the center of British government, but that all changed in the 1916 Easter Rising event. Captain Sean Connolly commanded a small group of troops from the Irish Citizens Army on an attack of Dublin Castle. Dublin Metropolitan Policeman James O'Brien was shot and killed and the rebels took control of the guardhouse before being forced to retreat into the fortified Dublin City Hall. Soon, Connolly was killed by a sniper bullet, making him the first rebel killed in the 1916 Easter Rising. Dublin Castle remained in the control of the British government until it was formally turned over to an independent Ireland in 1922. Since that time, it has been the center of government for the Irish Republic. There's two more things about Dublin Castle that often come to mind when it is mentioned, and they involve Dracula and stolen jewels. Dublin Castle was once the place of employment of Bram Stoker, who worked as the clerk of inspection. His father worked at the castle for 50 years. You may remember Bram Stoker as the author of Dracula. I wonder if he knew how big that character would become in modern times. Also, in 1907, the diamond chains of the Office of the Knights of St. Patrick were stolen from the ground floor library of the Office of Arms. These jewels, that are often referred to as the Irish crown jewels, have never been found and the crime has never been solved. If you have Irish ancestors, maybe you better check Grandma's attic to see if the jewels are hidden there. 
I know only a small part of Dublin Castle, the Record Tower, puts you in mind of medieval times, but the history and importance of this site cannot be denied. What are your thoughts? I'd love for you to comment below what you think about Dublin Castle. Do you enjoy thinking about its early history, its later balls and ceremonies, or do you think about its more recent history, like the castle's part in the 1916 Easter Rising? It is certainly an amazing place and one that you will want to see for yourself if you can. And remember, family tree nuts, let our nuts find the nuts in your family tree.